Welcome back to A Different Opinion. Today we have one here in Australia and also in America, obviously, with the food inflation. And I've been saying this for a long time. I mean, you can look at some of my old videos. I've been even saying it for the last probably two years since COVID hit. The prices of food is just going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then it's not going to stop. Many experts are saying maybe only by late 2023, the prices are going to stabilize or come down. And then you, you obviously know that the price is never going to come down. These people are that greedy. They don't care if you have to pay more and more money. Like I said in the previous videos as well is who's getting pay rises anymore? Like hardly anyone. And if you are, you're only getting a two and a half percent pay rise because apparently that's, that's all they have to do. But whereas if food's going up by, I'll show you in this one here by more than 10%. And then also inflation here in Australia is going up. I think they said four and a half, five percent, which I believe is it should be higher. It is higher, but they're just saying that as the the round figure. Same in America. I'll run through these with you, and you know just prepare. Maybe start thinking: should I buy maybe one extra can of food or one extra of this or whatever? But I mean, there's no end in sight, so I don't even know if that'll help. But maybe what I've started doing. Same with, you know, people I know is try and shop straight from the butcher. Cut out that, you know, cut out the middleman. If you are buying, let's say, meat, either go, you know, support your local butcheries or smaller ones. Or I've even, you know, I've got a friend that actually has someone that, you know, knows the farmer straight from there. And you can get the meat straight from him for a much lower cost. Same with eggs. If you buy it straight from the actual farm. Um, the smaller ones, cheaper, um, bacon, all those type of things. Veggies, I drive past a lot of farms and they always have the veggies or fruits out the front and with the bucket and say, you know, five bucks or whatever it is. And it's just so much cheaper and it supports local people as well. So I'll jump straight into this. It's from the Daily Mail here in Australia. Urgent warning issued to Coles and Woolworths shoppers. So Woolworths and Coles are the two biggest um, grocery shops in the whole of um, Australia. Um, so it's from Cameron Carpenter three hours ago. Australian shoppers are being warned to expect the cost of products on shelves to soar by more than 12% this year. That is insane. 12%. I've been calling it for a while. I mean, my shops have gone up by, I'd usually spend about 50 bucks. Now I'm spending about $90. That's $40. That's nearly double. It's been happening for a longer time than this. And now it's going to go even up even more. So Ben Gil Gilbert, retail analyst and at Investment Bank, Jardin says the price increase at supermarkets will be large as inflation continues to soar. Price increases are significantly larger than we expected, Mr. Gilbert said in his survey of key retail suppliers. And I can tell you right now, that's probably like three, $400 knowing how expensive our stuff is. Further increases are planned, either a second or a first at a planned weighted rate at 7.4%. This paints a scenario whereby we could see an annualized run rate of more than 12% through 2022. Meanwhile, he expects the number of specials and sales at supermarkets to drop, of course. And so that even technically adds even more percent on if they stop the specials. So let's say you usually get 20% off. Now they're pushing the price up and they're stopping the special. So technically it's going up by 27% if you usually only buy it on special. But people don't factor these things in and I hate how they, you know, they don't have to say these things. They're shafting, you know, everyday people, the middle class, the lower class with these things. So imagine having like three or four kids and you've got to put them through and you've got, you know, you're living off one, let's say, salary of sixty, seventy thousand dollars You can't do it anymore. And that's why you see more and more in countries like America, Australia, you can't survive on one, one income anymore. Especially when it comes to, unless if you're earning, I mean, maybe over $150,000, then you might be able to kind of, you know, get away with it, but not that many kids. Two kids, probably max. That's how expensive life is now compared to many years ago. I mean, how many years ago could you actually, you know, raise a family, kids on one income? It's, it's like a distant memory. And that's why more and more 
you know how like the government keeps saying we'll help you with your child care we'll subsidize it for you you know it's, it's all well and good but that pretty much just means they're trying to push you towards you both go back to work now come on be, be good little people and go back to work work your life away and it's just been that many years now and, and as we are as humans i mean pretty much whatever we get taught through the generations and generations it's normal to us you know let's say for example if instead of cow they decided mm, we're going to eat alligator instead or crocodile instead if that was the main farmed food and people were eating it now it would be normal if hundreds of years ago they decided crocodile is the main food we're going to eat but whereas now you're like mm, crocodile that's, that's a bit weird that's exotic you know what I mean? so it's just with that type of people same with rules i mean driving laws i mean our speeding tickets now i believe from if you're over by you know one to ten kilometers an hour maybe zero to six miles per hour over if you're american you got to pay at least i think it's a 300 and something dollar fine which is ridiculous so yeah you can see one lettuce is five dollars fifty one lettuce and i bet you the farmers aren't getting any more money are they no they're not we found 49 percent expect to reduce promotions while 11 percent are unsure some groceries at australia major supermarkets have already risen up to 94 percent that makes sense data released last month revealed with supermarkets admitting they have been forced to pass rising costs onto customers and warning it is only going to get worse Coles has jacked up prices by more than 3.3 percent over the march quarter to pass on the inflated cost of shipping fuel meat and fresh vegetables and the supermarket giant warns Cost would climb even further in the coming months. And how do you tear up a whole world? One disease. It wasn't even as bad as everyone's saying. I'm not going to name the name. Meanwhile, Woolworths warned that 160 out of its top 200 suppliers has requested an increase in the cost of their product, with suppliers expected to ask for further hike in the next 12 months. A head of lettuce at $5.50 is now more expensive than a $4 McDonald's cheeseburger, and they wonder why people are getting fatter and fatter. I mean, I've seen the prices there in America, you know, for burgers or Big Mac, whatever. And it's, it's half the, it's cheaper than like buying a lettuce, like same as this, a Big Mac would be like, I don't know, two, three dollars probably, depending on the specials. Like, why would you not eat bad? That's, that's the thing. It's so hard to eat healthy unless if you make a lot of money now. Nutritionists fear the situation will be determined, detrimental to Australians' health and families struggling to make ends meet. Turn to cheaper junk food. It's very true. AMP chief economist Shane Oliver said the combination of skyrocketing prices and halted salaries means Australians are technically taking a pay cut. Yes. That means real purchasing power, the amount of goods and services your pay will provide, are actually going backwards, he explained. It's a sad world we live in, isn't it? How we don't have a say in any of this. None of us do. You know, unless you're very, very rich, well off then it doesn't really affect you as much. But for normal people, you know, in the middle class, lower class, I mean, even, you know, even people that are earning $100,000, like even they will be affected by this quite a bit. So, you know, when's it going to end is a real question. It's, that's where all these lockdowns and everything have come to bite us in the butt. That's what everyone was saying as well. I mean, all the people that weren't so afraid of this virus they were saying, don't do these lockdowns, it'll destroy economies. And now we're paying the massive, massive price for this. I mean, it's, it's a tough thing. Fear of the amount of lives we thought we were going to lose compared to the price of everyone's futures. And I mean, that's why you see suicide rates are just through the roof. Because what, what's the thing that most people really actually stress about all the time is money, stability, food, family, etc. Yeah, it comes back down to it. And no pay rises are in sight. So companies are just making, 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 making. And we're paying, 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 paying. And they wonder why there's less and less spending happening. Um, why you aren't as rich as you used to be and even $90,000 salaries are now considered just modest. Exactly. Australian wages are now effectively falling. I feel like I'm just saying exactly what they're saying before I actually even read it. Australian wages are now effectively falling as surging inflation eats up pay rises and threatens to spark an interest rate rise two years early. I mean, pay rises my butthole. I mean, I didn't get a pay rise because apparently 
I'm still above all these, um, you know, levels coming through. So I'm above the pay rate thing or whatever they say here in Australia. So it means I'm earning more than what normal people are earning in my position. So I won't get a pay rise, but the people that are earning the, the base amount for my position, they'll get that two and a half percent pay rise or whatever the hell it is, which doesn't even make a difference. Women are taking an even bigger economic hit than men as Russian invasion of Ukraine pushes petrol prices and adding to a higher rental and mortgage stress. The Macal Institute think tank calculated that across Australia, women in 2021 suffered a 1.6% fall in pay while inflation is taken into account compared to 1.2% for men. Oh, come on, man. Now we're just really picking at like little, the littlest things. I mean, we're all taking pay cuts here. It's not... This isn't sexist, no matter if you're trying to freaking make it that way. It's men and women, women and men, whatever else. Everyone gets affected by this. Chief Executive Michael Buck Buckland used International Women's Day to highlight the weak wages growth and hurting female workers in particular. Real wages are contacting and no focus of plan to things turn around. Across Australia, both men and women are doing it tough with the value of their pay packets falling in real terms. Thank you for saying that. But this data shows women are doing it much tougher by 0.4%. Okay. In the year November, average wages before bonuses and overtime rose by just 2.1%. Australia Bureau of Statistics data showed so exactly. And here we are with 12% and even higher. By comparison, the headline inflation rate in March surged by 5.1%, fastest pace in 21 years, and a level well above the Reserve Bank's 2 to 3% target. And I called this. It's annoying. New is coming and people just think, oh, keep lockdowns, keep lockdowns. And then eventually, you know, people get sick of it. And then now we realize, most people realize now only what it actually really costs as a country. So I'll jump into this. This is from 9th of November, 2021 in the USA. So it's even worse probably now. US food prices soar with no end in sight. Grocery prices jumped 4.5% year over year in September and the highest jump since August, 2020. I have people over there in America that say that it is much higher than this. Much, much higher. They're saying similar to me where if you usually shop $100 worth of food, you're paying at least $140, $50 now. At least 150% increase. Uh, food prices are... Sorry, 50% increase. Um, food prices are soaring and analysts do not foresee a peak until at least well into 2023. Climate change, skyrocketing transportation and energy costs, and widespread labor shortages are all contributing to the run-up in grocery bills. Food inflation also threatens the post-pandemic recovery by accelerating inflation and potentially upending how food is moved, bought, and sold in America. The food at home segment of the consumer price index, which represents that consumers pay for groceries, jumped 4.5% um, year over year in September, the highest increase since August. 2020, the broader consumer price index, the market's preferred inflation measure was up 5.4% in September. US shoppers are paying about 25% more than were a year ago for sirloin steak, 29% more for bacon, 36% more for eggs, according to the latest US Bureau of Labor Statistics data. But, so all these things are up by more than 20%, but no, no, they'll just say it's only increased by, you know, 4.5%. How like how does that make sense? Like the th the main things that people buy are up by more than twenty percent, and you're trying to say it's up only four and a half percent. Come on, man! It's going to get worse for the next twelve to eighteen months," said Phil Lempert, a grocery st store analyst and founder of the SupermarketGuru.com, in an interview. It's going to take a lot of time, money to fix these issues. Grocery prices are on track to rise between two and a half to three and a half percent this year, which is not true. It's bigger than that. Largely driven so far by surging beef and veal prices, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture Economic Economical Research Service. The agency forecasts prices will rise 2022 by 2.5%. Yet again, these things are such lies. That might be a conservative estimate, however, of any price hikes likely here to stay, economists said. It's something that goes up and then plateaus as we reach a new equilibrium. This is stupid. I'm not even going to listen to him anymore because it's not true. Like, I don't know if they average it out, maybe, let's say there's a thousand products in the store. Let's say, you know, 60 of them went up by 40%, 30%. Um, another 20 went up by like 10%. And 
and then the other ones just stayed the same. Because obviously they're not going to go down. That's just, that's not how this world works. So I don't know if they average out maybe by the amount of products and then by percentage it went up, blah, blah, blah. But I think they should work it out by, let's say there's a thousand products. These hundred are our best sellers. We're selling, you know, over a thousand units every day. And they gone up by more than 20%, but the other 900 were only selling five of a day. So in reality, that's the biggest price hike because most people are buying these things. And that's not how they work it out. And that's, that's what annoys me. There's so many faults in the system, how they work out the consumer price index. And it's always just a, a deflated number on what the actual inflation is. I'll digress. Let me know what you think. Do you think the prices are going to keep going up like I do? Um, will it ever end? I'm not even sure how you can stop it. If you, if you know how to stop it, if you think you know have a way to stop it, please let me know. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Please like the video if you did like it. And also subscribe if you do want to see future videos. And um, thanks for watching. And I'll also see you in the next video.